All right, so today on Snowwalker Bushcraft, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a first aid kit. I don't mean a first aid kit like this. This first aid kit's a little too big. So what I want to do is I want to talk about a kit that you can use, whether you're hiking, whether you're kayaking, canoeing, you know, dog sledding. We don't need it to take up a lot of space, but we do need to have something. Improvision is good, and it's a key part in wilderness first aid. Knowing what you have in your kit that's going to help you affect that emergency care when you're in the wilderness. But with the advances that there are today, there's no reason that you shouldn't carry one. Today on Snowwalker Bushcraft. All right, so again, what we're talking about is we're talking about a kit that you can take. It's readily available. It's small. It's not going to take up a lot of room in your pack. I just want to show you everything that's in the contents of this bag. This bag is nothing more than a 249 saw pouch that you can get at any military surplus store. And it's big enough to carry the things that I think that are applicable to most of our injuries when we're out in the woods or whatever activity that we're doing outdoors. Okay, real quick, like what we have in this kit. Right here, we have nitro gloves. Uh, we have at least two to three pairs of nitro gloves. Remember, body substance isolation is paramount when you're treating yourself and or somebody else. Also, it helps to not contaminate a wound if we're dealing with such an issue. What I've done is I've actually broken this down into a couple of different areas. Over here is going to be bleeding and hemorrhage control. Over here is going to be uh, immobilization. And here, uh, these are your just your basic body needs, aches and pains and things. So, uh, bleeding and hemorrhage control. We'll go over these one at a time uh, at a later date. For now, we have an Israeli bandage here. We have just, you know, some everyday band-aids. Trust me. These are okay, you don't need them. Again, improvision is paramount when you start talking about wilderness first aid, and there's nothing wrong with using duct tape if you have it in your kit. Here, what I have, this is a SWAT T tourniquet. Uh, this is one of the easier tourniquets to use, and we'll discuss that. And here, this is a CAT tourniquet or a combat application tourniquet. Tourniquets nowadays are stellar in comparison to improvising a tourniquet. Get a tourniquet, learn how to use it, and use it well. Um, if you're bleeding out, bleeding out is not cool, it ain't sexy, and I would rather have this on hand than sitting there trying to improvise one when you can bleed out in three minutes or less, depending upon the wound. Last but not least, sutures. You can buy sutures in packs of five. Uh, why would you use sutures? Well, because I'm not going to sit there and try to use a sail needle to do stitches when it's approximately the equivalent of an 18 gauge needle. So next time you're at the doctor's office, ask the doctor, hey doc, would you ever do stitches with an 18 gauge needle? And he's probably going to look at you funny. Let's go over here to immobilization. Greatest thing in the world, one of these things. It's called a SAM splint. It's reusable, it folds flat, it rolls up. All right, it even has the instructions right on it. You can cut it, you can use it for fingers. It's not a big deal. This self-adhesive wrap, it's known as vet wrap when it first came out and they used it on horses. Okay, well, you can use vet wrap. Vet wrap will not hurt a human. Uh, and there you go. Use this for your immobilization needs. Again, you can use your duct tape if you needed it, but you know what? If I have the availability where I can take this on and off, then I'm going to use this, and this cost me $3. Um, you want to address your teeth. Uh, I always have dental floss in the kit. I don't feel like trying to floss with tarred bank line, and uh, you know I don't want to use paracord either. I'll carry a couple of different things of emergency. If, uh, if I start to feel run down, there's no pine trees around to get the uh, pine tea 
to boost the immune system, I'll have that. Now, this is just to demonstrate if you have any medications and if you're on daily meds, take at least a week's supply of your daily meds. I have a little tiny Tupperware that I will put meds in and or Advil. The whole thing on using plants and everything else while you're out there. Here's my thought. Why am I not going to carry aspirin, Advil, Tylenol, anything of that nature? If you have a headache and that headache is bad enough, it's debilitating. Are you going to rummage around looking in the woods for willow to make a decoction or a tea or something of that nature to take away the headache and hopefully that it works? I don't think so. So again, that's why I would say just get a little Tupperware, put some stuff in it, make sure you have it, and address it. Address the issue so that you can go on. Last but not least, last but not least in the kit, a Fresnel lens. Just a small Fresnel lens. You know what? I get it. You got a magnifying glass on your compass. Most people do. It's about as big as your thumbnail. And if you want the overall picture of maybe a wound that you're looking at and you're trying to clean out, I don't know. It just doesn't work. And it just doesn't make any sense not to carry something like this. Uh, people give them away. Go get one. Throw it in there. And have it. All right, so as you can see, it's a small enough kit that it's going to take care of most of your injuries and your ailments, all right? Anything else beyond that, you may be in some problems, okay? And you may have to just make do with what you have in your kit. Always remember in Wilderness First Aid as well, you're not going to use all your stuff first. You're going to use the other guy's stuff. So if you're treating somebody, if you've taken a class, you can use his stuff to treat him before you're going to use your stuff. We're talking about us and what we have and what we can carry. Again, whatever you feel comfortable with is great and improvision is always good. But if I can get by with something small like this, it's just the way to go. So anyway, that's it. We're going to continue on in this series. We'll talk about the parts uh, individually later on. And uh, that's it. So Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, thanks for your views and your comments. Till the next one, walk the woods.